Okay, so now that we've understood that, we can uh, look a bit at our comparative static. You know, we've said by looking at the equations that when recruiting costs are lower, uh, oh, sorry, when recruiting costs are higher, or the value of unemployment is higher, in both cases that will tend to boost uh, or boost or increase the efficient unemployment rate. Okay, because it tilts a trade-off, the welfare trade-off towards having more unemployment. So how do we see that on this graph? Well, it's very easy. So let me. Uh, move to a new graph just to clean up a bit. <coughs> okay, so imagine that we start from a situation like this. So that's our initial situation. So here we have our initial U star, okay? And uh, here you recognize it's our ISO, ISO welfare line, which has to be tangent. Uh, sorry, it's really a bit, okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, so we have our ISO welfare line. There's a point of tangency with the beverage curve. At that point of tangency, we have efficiency. Okay, and so we find U star. The ISO welfare line, uh, we remember the slope is given by two coefficient. So the slope we said was minus, indeed it's downward sloping, 1 minus z, where z is the value of unemployment divided by r, okay? Uh, where r is the working cost. So that's our condition. So now let's change color and ask what happens if suddenly the recruiting cost goes up. You increase your recruiting cost. So the logic we said that if you increase recruiting cost, um, vacancies become more costly, okay, and so that tends to make unemployment less costly because when you have more unemployment, you have lower tightness, and so you can have a lower recruiter pollution ratios, you can have um, fewer recruiters. Uh, so if you increase recruiting costs, vacancies are more costly, so this pushes you to having more unemployment. That's what we had said from the equation. How does it show on this graph? Well, if R goes up, R is shows up here, right? Um, so it goes, it's in the denominator here of our slope. If R goes up, um, the, the curve, the ISO welfare line is going to become flatter, right? If R goes, it becomes very, very high, the, the line becomes almost um, horizontal. So it means that our curve is going to shift to become flatter. Now, where is a new tangency point once you do that? Well, you can see if I, if I have a, a flatter line, my new tangency is going to be further out. So maybe we'll have something like this. Um, let me make a flatter line and make sure we'll find it. <coughs> okay, so now here you can see uh, so we have a flatter ISO welfare line and its flatter it corresponds with uh, it arises if we have a higher recruiting cost that's due to a higher uh, okay uh, so that's what I have here so where is the tangency point you can see you have a new tangency point here so it is further out We have a further efficiency point, and the new efficient unemployment is here. So you can see that efficient unemployment has drastically increased when the recruiting cost when the routine cost goes up. So basically, when the routine cost goes up, 
adding vacancies is more costly and so that tends to push the social uh, social planner to have more unemployment. Again, you can see that directly on the graph. So that's what happens when you're putting cross cover. Now you can ask the same question and say like what happens if the value of unemployment goes up and you know kind of uh, we see that kind of the similar thing happen. Because again if the value of unemployment goes up, the trade-off between unemployment and vacancies, which is the two things that the government trade-off you know, you can't have You know, if you're a government, you would like to have no unemployment, no vacancies, because unemployment means resources that are not used for production. Vacancies mean resources that are diver diverted from production towards recruiting. So your goal as a government is to have no unemployment, no vacancies. But of course, that's not possible because you have to be on the beverage curve. And the beverage curve tells you, sure, you can have very little unemployment, but then you need a lot of vacancies. Or you can have very few vacancies, then you need a lot of unemployment. So there's really a trade-off between unemployment and vacancies. Both things are bad in a sense from a welfare perspective. You would like to have as little of them as possible, which is why, you know, close to the origin, the welfare is higher. You, you want to minimize unemployment and vacancies. But so but you can't you know get rid of them because you have to be on your beverage curve. And so it's always it's good to think of the welfare problem in our model as a trade-off between unemployment and vacancies and that trade-off is governed by the beverage curve. The beverage curve tells you how you can uh, exchange if you want vacancies for unemployment. So if uh, so here let's start um, with a clean graph again. So I have my You know, I redraw so this is again my efficiency point it's again my efficient unemployment rate <coughs> this is again the ISO welfare line Okay, and now the question that we're asking is what happens if Z, the, the social value of unemployment, the security of, let's say, home production, uh, for instance, so what happens if Z goes up? And we have kind of the intuition in our head that if the value of unemployment is higher, unemployment is less costly, so the trade-off between unemployment and vacancies becomes more favorable if you have You know, it's going to push you towards unemployment. You want to have more unemployment because unemployment is less costly. It's more valuable. So we know we expect to find a higher efficient uh, unemployment uh, rate. And indeed, that's what's going to happen because you remember that the <coughs> ISO welfare line, the slope as we've said many times, the slope of the ISO welfare line is minus 1 minus Z over R. So now if I increase Z, 1 minus Z is going to become smaller and minus 1 minus Z over R, of course, which is a negative number, is going to become higher. And uh, so it means that the slope is higher. So your, or if you think about the negative slope, you know, the, the slope is higher, which means that your uh, ISO welfare line is going to become flatter when I increase the value of an increment. So once again, I need to have a flatter curve, you know, maybe something like this. Okay. Uh, right, so the efficient tangency point now is here. So that's the new position of efficiency. So that's the new U-star because we have a flatter is the way and so once more uh, you know now we can see immediately what happens in this beverage curve diagram um, the unemployment rate efficient unemployment rate is going to go up again once the value of unemployment <coughs> goes up and again that's because it alters the trade-off between unemployment and vacancies uh, unemployment is um, less costly compared to vacancies so you want more of it to maximize your social welfare um, Okay, uh, so that's uh, that's how we can analyze graphically 
the welfare problem. Uh, so now the last thing we can do, so you know, if you're a government and I give you these tools, that, that's fine. You, know, you could uh, you have your unemployment vacancy data, you can estimate a beverage girl, and then you can kind of use this little diagram to figure out what is the efficient unemployment rate. It's not super you know, convenient in the sense that you want to have a formula that's more uh, that's more uh, you know chug and plug where I give you a formula you have some value of the statistics that you can estimate using statistical tools you plug this value in the formula and boom you get your efficient unemployment rate and then you can compare that to the actual unemployment rate and you can get the unemployment gap you know which is the distance between um, the current unemployment rate and um, the efficient unemployment rate. So that's the last thing that I want to do now is to derive a formula that you can just use directly to get your efficient unemployment rate and efficient tightness.